Uh, I think that there's China in there. What is up, my guys? I'm A8 Reviews. Right next to me is the new Chrysler Pacifica. This particular one is the Touring L trim with the S appearance package and this beautiful ocean blue. Guys, this is a stealthy car, really. Um, but the thing is, it's a minivan, so yeah. But I have a little bit of knowledge on the Pacifica because my aunt owns the top of the line limited trim and I actually got to drive it a little bit and I actually did like it. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to drive this. I will definitely let you guys know on my website as well as film a driving review of this thing. Maybe I might be able to get to drive it today, but I have the keys to it and let's get started. So I want to give a huge shout out to TriStar Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram for allowing me to review the new Pacifica. I've already done a review with them before on the Ram 1500. I will link that up in the cards and I will also link it in the description below. So again, thank you so much TriStar for allowing me to review the Pacifica for you guys today and see how this is pretty much the ultimate swagger van. So the Pacifica nameplate returns. You may actually know this as a mid-size SUV that they produced a while back but got rid of and it comes back with a minivan. So because the Chrysler Pacifica is so new and it is so kind of car based, they wanted to give it a different name than the town and country nameplate, which actually, if it were to have the town and country nameplate, this would be the sixth generation, but this is the first generation of the minivan. But Chrysler still has packed a lot of innovation in this car. Also, the Grand Caravan is still being sold, but it's primarily for commercial vehicle sales only. And it's also got a lot of discounts where some of them are actually dropping under $20,000 for their base model, which that is an absolute steal for a minivan. So, about the Pacifica. Well, it's a minivan. There is quite a bit of competition. There is the Grand Caravan, like I said. There is the Honda Odyssey, as well as the Kia Sedona, and the Toyota Sienna. This is a really packed segment where minivans are kind of booming. Um, Nissan's Quest is no longer available because they stopped selling it, probably also because of the absolutely abysmal safety ratings that it got in the IIHS top safety pit, or in the IIHS small overlap test, which obviously it'll do bad on the passenger side. Models. You have multiple models. First you start off with the base model, which is the L model, and that starts at $26,980. That's a pretty decent deal for the features that you get because there's so many standard safety features available for this thing. Jump up to the LX and you will pay $29,040. Touring Plus, $31,740. Touring L that this one is equipped with is $35,040. Jump up to the Sienna, $29,000. Touring 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 Sienna, $29,000.
jump up to the Touring L Plus and you have a $37,890 $37, price tag for that van. And you can finally jump all the way up to the Limited for a whopping $42,940. But that's not it. This minivan is also the first minivan to have a plug-in hybrid in history. Yes, you heard that right. The Pacifica has a hybrid powertrain. Right here would be the actual door to plug it in, to plug in and get you 33 miles of EV range alone and 30 miles to the gallon combined. But this one is a lot different. This is the base engine 3.6 so the hybrid comes I believe in the hybrid limited the touring L plus I believe as well as the touring L I'll let you guys know in the bottom script below here what models are available and what their prices are but let's go ahead and take a look at the Chrysler Pacifica so up front of the Pacifica you can see that this front end is majorly styled like the Chrysler 200 that actually it's no longer being sold, discontinued in 2017. Yeah, it was a very lanky, problematic car. But anyway, Pacifica adopts the styling and it honestly looks really good on this car. Here you have these very swooping kind of headlights. You have an LED signature that runs across the bottom. Halogen headlights, I'm very surprised, especially high up in this trim that the, L the HIDs are not available. You have to jump all the way up to the limited trim and get the safety tech package to get them. You also have halogen high beams as well as the halogen turn signals and halogen fog lights below. Normally, the Pacifica grille here, the bottom, is gonna be chrome, but since this is the S appearance package, it blacks everything out, including the wheels, this grille here, the lower grille, and it gets rid of some of the bling, and you also have this kind of black plastic mesh grille as well. Overall, the front end of the Pacifica is pretty darn sporty. It looks a little bit too car-like, but in a way that's a good thing. But minivans aren't really made for style. They're made for the cargo practicality. So yeah, so let's take a look around the side. So like I said, this is the S appearance package. Here you get body colored mirrors. You also get 18 inch rims riding on 235 60 R18s. Coming around the side of the Pacifica, this is no small vehicle. At 203.6 inches long, it's a very big car. It's almost Chevrolet Traverse long. And I believe that the Traverse is about an inch and a half longer than this. So with that being said, I said before, remember I had said before that this is the S appearance package? Well, blackout everywhere. You get special 18 inch aluminum alloy rims painted in gloss black that are wrapped in 235 60 series tires. Also with the S appearance package, you can get bigger 20 inch rims. That is the largest of the class, and that's pretty much to me, that's a little bit of overkill, but your tires get wider by 10 millimeters. Also, you can see, normal Pacificas would have this piece here all in chrome. The S appearance package puts black on it. That's honestly how a blackout package should look. Also, the wheelbase is 121.6 inches long. So it's very long, it's very wide. It's got more than enough room to fit all your passengers. And we'll go over that when we go into the interior. But let's go ahead and take a look at the back and see what's to offer. So coming around back of the Pacifica, you can easily see that this is a minivan because the actual lift gate back here is pretty flat. There's no real slope like the three row crossover SUVs and all that. If you do have the S appearance package, you get a little S logo. The Pacifica gets blacked out. The Chrysler Wing gets blacked out. You have this subtle little spoiler back here. You have this wrap around window and excuse whatever that is, I'm not sure what it is. Um, you also have this little black plastic panel right back here. And coming to the taillights, I don't know how well you guys can see it. You have full LED taillights. The turn signals are red. I kind of prefer that because it doesn't look as tacky, but it's halogen headlamps here. And you also have a hal or halogen backup light, LED taillights and such. And down here you get this kind of 
blacked out little diffuser here. There is no visible exhaust tip. It's tucked neatly under so it improves aerodynamics. So it's great that Chrysler did not decide to follow the trend of many other cars by faking exhaust tips. So thank you Chrysler for doing that. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the interior. So jumping into the Pacifica, here is the key fob. It is very, very big and bulky, but it does feel nice in your hands. Here you have the lock button. It'll beep at you when you hit it. Unlock. Here you have the power tailgate open. You also have remote start. Press it twice. It'll beep at you. It'll start right up. To turn it off, push the button again. You also have power opening doors back here. So hit the, hit the button two times and it will open as well. Also, the Pacifica, I'm not sure if this one has it, but I'll show you guys the feature. There's supposedly a sensor under this door here that if you swing your foot under it, but if you swing your foot under the bumper or under here, the door will actually open. Now that is a very, very, very nice feature because I know a lot of you parents that have kids buy these kinds of minivans and you kind of sometimes don't have the time to, or the hands to go fumble around for the key to open the door, pull on the door handle or such and whatever. But this also is keyless entry with push button start. So if you come up to the door, just, there's a little sensor right here. Push it, it locks it. There's a sensor behind the door and it'll unlock and then you can open it. And these doors open pretty decently wide. So let's go ahead and get a really in-depth look at the interior. So first looking at the interior from a first impression, again, this is the S appearance package. So you get these black stitched leather seats with the S embroidered logo on it. And it's also white stitched down here. And overall, the interior is very black. I do like that though but it does get very hot very quick in the interior. So stepping in, it's got a very nice step in height. It's almost SUV-like, to be honest. But when you shut the door, let's try that again. There's a tiny bit of rattle. Um, let me try that again. And it feels pretty solid but this is honestly on the 200 platform, um, the Chrysler 200 platform, I believe, a very elongated one. So yeah, we're gonna start the car because it's absolutely hot. So all you need to do is make sure you have the key fob in your pocket or purse, put your foot on the start br or the brake and push the button over here to start the engine. The gauges do a nice sweep. Here you have a seven inch Uconnect touch screen here. And let's get the, Let's get the uh, AC cranking. Which honestly, it takes a while for it to come on, which is kind of not really good to me. But at the steering wheel here, it's a very nice three spoke design. It turns really nice. It feels a little bit sporty. It's very thick. That's one thing for sure. It's not perfor perforated leather. It does have a heated steering wheel on this model, which is awesome. You also have heated seats here. Ventilated seats do not come until you hit the limited model, but you have eight-way power adjustable seat or an eight-way power adjustable seat for the front passenger or the front driver here and four-way lumbar, which is honestly a surprise. Um, I find these seats extremely comfortable and with me being six foot two, I have plenty of thigh support. My hand can actually fit under and I know many cars nowadays, the smaller ones actually do not have very much comfort. So looking at your steering wheel here, here is your controls for your little 3.5 inch um, TFT display in here. It's got all the basics like your speedometer, your vehicle info with your um, tire pressures, your coolant temps, transmission temps, oil temps, oil pressure, um, oil life, battery voltage, and such. You have your fuel economy, your trip info, stop start, which honestly is a little bit odd because you almost have to do every single thing to actually get this thing to go or to turn off. You have your audio controls, your messages, and your screen setup and such. You can also see your speedometer and switch it between 
the modes. The dials on the left and right here are analog. You have a digital um, readout for the engine temperature and the fuel gauge, which honestly, yeah, I do like that because it's definitely cleaning it up. So this is the 3.5 liter or 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar engine. It sounds pretty good. It's got a very smooth rev limiter, that's one thing for sure. So coming back here, you have your phone hang up and um, your phone hang up and pickup buttons as well as your voice recognition. Here you have contro uh, controls for your cruise control, um, your cancel, resume, set up and um, set down as well as on and off. There's blank switches here which I do not like, but I believe that might go with the safety tech group and such. Coming around here, again, 7-inch um, Uconnect. I see a little problem here. There's a little piece panel here that actually got pushed out. So there I just pushed it back in, so it looks a little better. Central air vents. You can also get an 8-inch or 8.4-inch Uconnect screen. It's absolutely huge. Now, this infotainment system is pretty much almost exactly similar to the um, Ram 1500. So I'll link that up there. Also a unique quirk about um, SCA vehicles, I don't know how well you guys are going to see this, but there's controls back here to um, decrease your volume, increase it, as well as change the mode. Back over here, I'm not sure what these buttons do, they change the uh, seek or the track name, I'm not sure what this button does, but yeah. This is the controller for your 9-speed automatic transmission, it is the ZF Automatic um, the rotary shift knob, I really like it. It's really smooth. It's fluid. Um, to get into L, you have to push down from drive and click over, but you can just go right there. Electronic parking brake. Here you have the controls for your audio, your um, volume here. You can turn your auto start stop off. You can turn the park sense system off. You can turn traction control off, so you can do burnouts in this thing. You can mute, you can also hit that for the hazard lights. There's also a screen off button that turns the actual screen off. You can also press it again to open it. It's got a tune knob, or to turn the screen back on, it's got a tune knob. AC controls down here for your tri-zone climate control. That is awesome. I really like that Chrysler decided to put a tri-zone climate control, I believe as standard. I think it comes on the L model, but I'm not exactly sure. Coming down here, you have a USB port with an aux cord. There's some storage here. You also got more storage down here. Push this button and you can open up a really deep storage cubby with coin slots coming down here. You have a 12 volt down here and you also have a USB port again. Down here is a little, a huge storage cubby with an actual quirk. If you can see, this is the past few generations of the Grand Caravan and the Pacifica. So you can see that's the first gen, second, third, and the Pacifica here. Also, this center console is huge. This is a pass-through center console. Can you see my hand? Coming over here, you got some pretty monstrous cup holders. I'm drinking my Monster. Um, and that definitely fits everything. It's got little bladders here that kind of hold it. Um, you also have a little cubby here. Let me move the keys and my phone. You can, I believe, open this cubby up. Um, you have armrests here. So poking around the interior, saw so you have you have hard touch up here, which honestly, I wish it was uh, soft touch. The limited model gets leather stitched um, up here, which is very nice. Again, hard plastic. Um, you got some aluminum accenting. Sorry about the noise. Aluminum accenting around the uh, handles here. Coming over here, still hard touch. Still hard touch up here, but that's expected. Coming to the door panel, it's very soft touch here. Um, coming over here, it's also leather stitched, I believe or it's vinyl. It's also soft touch. Storage cubby down here as well. There's a storage cubby also down here. Those are also hard touch, but that's expected. You have auto up down windows for the front windows only, which is a very nice touch. I wasn't expecting the rears to have it, but at least the rears can actually go down and up. You have a lockout control, power mirrors. They're also heated. You also have blind spot, more on that later. The actual mirror here, to me, it's a little bit small. But again, the minivan here, this Pacifica does have a really wide rear window. So you don't really need a huge um, mirror for that. Coming over here, let's see if it passes the straight pipes test. 
one, two, three, it passes. I expected that. Here you have a little mirror that opens up and you can see yourself. Hi, I'm very ugly. Coming over here, flip this down and you actually have a little tiny mirror right here that you can see your rear view passengers if the kids are being a little bit noisy and a little bit rowdy. Coming over here, sunglass holder. Here you have LED lighting all throughout the interior and you also have a power door release off button, which honestly, that's kind of cool, but I would expect um, Chrysler to, uh, or I would have expected Chrysler to tie that in with the window locks, but you can also release them from here. You also have a home link system here and such. Um, coming over here to the glove box, it opens, it's lined, or it's, um, it's damped really a lot, but it is not lined with felt. It is a pretty decent space, but it does feel like it's on the small side. But then again, this is a minivan. You got to also think about practicality. So let's go ahead and take a look in the back and see how much room there is. But Pacifica has power doors. You can also, the way you can actually open these, you can pull on the handle here. You can also push on that button. It will go back automatically and it'll open up to reveal a pretty decent size area. You can also push it again to close it. But coming inside, the door opening is pretty wide. You have a grab handle here. Coming over here, the Pacifica is extremely roomy. I have to say, you can also pull this little lever here to get a lot of recline. You guys see me at all? I don't think so. Um, here is a button to actually move the front pat or front driver's seat forward. It is not existent on the passenger side. I do believe that it might be with the power seats on the yeah. limited. Um, not exactly sure. I will have to read upon that. But to close the door, there's a button here. You also have an armrest. The front seats have armrests too. Um, the head restraints are adjustable, only two way, but that's fine. You have a little storage cubby here. Limited models get a flip up um, entertainment system for both rear passengers. So one can play tic tac toe while the other's watching their movie, so you don't have to hear them arguing. There's something else I also have to show you, and that is these stow and go seats. Now, Chrysler has pioneered their stow and go seats on the Grand Caravan slash Town Country and this Pacifica. In order to do so, you actually have to push this front button here for the front driver's seat. It will move up and forward, which is actually pretty quick for it to do that. Then there's this little tiny lever here. Pull on that. Pull up right here as well. Pull it back. Put it up. It'll latch itself into place. So let's try this again, pull on the thing, completely latch it down, goes all the way down, pull that. It latches right into place. Here you have a completely flat load floor and it also, con it also contributes to a very, very big cargo area. The Honda Odyssey does not have this. The Kia Sedona does not have this. The Toyota Sienna doesn't even have it either. The Chrysler Pacifica and Dodge Grand Caravan are the only vehicles in the segment to have this feature. But there's one thing. You can get eight passenger seating, this one's seven. The middle seat does not fold into the floor because obviously the drivetrain's there. But also, you do have a small storage cubby if you leave the seats up. Um, you also have, if I jump over, if I jump over here, you have a sunshade for the second row in the back here, which is really awesome because I really like that. Power windows, do they go the whole way down? No, they do not. That's part of the door design, so I'll, I'll be fine with it. To open the door, there's a button here. Like I said, it's the same on the other side. Or you can also pull on this lever to open it as well. The lock button's down here. You have a cup holder here. Um, there's two cup holders up front. You can also pull this back to reveal two more. So all in all right now, there's a total of actually six cup holders and that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and jump back into the third row because that's where minivans tend to actually be the absolute best. So getting into the back of the Pacifica is actually really easy. If you have the bench seat, you'll be fine. The actual Pacifica with the seven passenger seating actually really fits nicely. 
Um, you can easily walk through there, but if you do have the um, eight passenger, there's a little lever on the side here. You can pull on it. It's hydraulically assisted. It'll tilt the seat forward for you. I believe you might be able to actually keep a child restraint on here or a child seat on here. I'll have to read upon that. But it leaves you with a pretty darn good amount of space to actually get back here. Getting back here. Wow, room, room, room. Right back here, I have so much headroom. I have more than a fist. I've probably got, I've got, a, I've got that much room left. My fist in my hand. And back here, it is very comfy. You get third row, you get third row uh, sunshades also, which honestly is freaking amazing. I was not expecting a minivan to do that. But you have a cup holder back here, you have two more on this side, bringing that to a pretty hefty total. Of, there's nine so far, but I know there's more up front. So there's probably about 11 or 12 cup holders in this thing, which is kind of overkill, but that's fine. These back seats also recline, but let's jump over to this side and see why the Pacifica is so darn roomy. I'm six foot two and a half. I'm sitting behind a upright, um, an upright passenger here. I have more than a hand's worth of room width. I actually have about, I should have about five and a half fingers of room. So it's still, prob that's probably about three to four, maybe five inches of room. These back seats also recline as well, and they recline really far. Limited models, you get it power assisted, which is pretty cool. Still, you have Arizona or climate controls up here as well, and the center seat belt's tucked away in the roof, which honestly I do not like. Um, I wish they would have put it in the center seat, but then again, they have to um, get some storage. But yeah, I mean, it's so roomy back here, and honestly, eight or seven or eight adults could fit back here very well. And the center seat is actually the same, um, same height as the other seats, but the seat bottom cushion could use a little bit more firm, uh, a little bit more switchiness. Um, I still have plenty of room. I have maybe about an inch of headroom still, but I can definitely sit back here. And also, again, pull the seat back. Getting out is just very easy. So, let's go back and see what makes minivan so darn practical. So coming around back to the Pacifica, you can open it while the car is on with the key fob. I do not believe there is a trunk release button um, on the inside of the interior up front. I will have to find out where that is. I'll let you guys know. But opening the trunk up, you get massive amounts of space. A minivan is very practical, and actually the Pacifica has been designed so that you can actually put four by eight sheets of, of plywood in the back here. That's nuts! Because the cargo area is very wide, and it's also very long, and also the seats fold completely in the back compared to the other competitors where you actually have to take it out. Like I said, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if I said this um, before, the middle seat in the second row, if you get the A-passenger version, does not fold into the floor. You actually have to take it out. But I've heard the seat's very light, so that's a pretty darn good thing compared to the Honda Odyssey. That seat's probably weigh about 70 pounds or so. So with all the seats folded up, you get 37.1 cubic foot. That is plenty of space. And that is better than my 2016 Hyundai Tucson. It beats it by about six cubic foot, but then again, this is also 40-ish inches longer, and it's also a lot more practical, and it's also not an SUV, this is a minivan. But a very deep cubby here. Why is there a very deep cubby? Because if you pull this, pull that, put the head restraint down, these seats come back and fold down into the cargo area, 60-40, just by pulling one, and then pulling that down, and they tumble right in. The third row on limited models are power, which is pretty cool. As soon as you fold down the third row seats, you have 87 and a half cubic foot of storage. When you fold the second row down all the way back, 100 
40.5 cubic foot of storage. It is so dang long. If I lay down with the pass with the driver's seat adjusted for me, I still have maybe another foot yet. So Shaquille and Neil can pretty much sleep back here. It is that roomy, and I mean, geez, like for real, this thing is so darn roomy. I don't know how Chrysler does it, but innovation is really at its finest here. So let's jump out and get a look at the powertrain. So this is the tried and true 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 with automatic start-stop capability that can turn the engine off at stoplights for better economy and less emissions. This is also only port injected, but it makes a pretty good 287 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 262 pound-foot of torque at 4,000. It used to be the most horsepower in the class until the Sienna came out with, I believe, 296 or 298 horsepower when they retweaked the Sienna, gave it the new 3.5 V6 and the 8-speed. But the Pacifica has one leg up on all the competition. This has a ZF 9-speed automatic transmission. Yes, 9-speed auto. It gives you so much performance and it gets you really good fuel economy as well. Fuel economy is rated at a pretty good 19 city, 28 highway, and 22 combined. That is very good for a minivan. Now, there's also a hybrid option, like I was saying about earlier. Still has 3.6 liter V6, but it has two electric motors, still front drive, hooked up to an eCVT with around 260 horsepower. But here's one downfall that I do not like about the Pacifica. It does not offer optional all-wheel drive. The Toyota Sienna is the only minivan in its class to have all-wheel drive. But if you need eight seats and you want the Sienna, you're probably going to have to go with a front-wheel drive model. I'm not sure if they come with the all-wheel drive because of the transmission hump. But, yeah. So, towing with the Pacifica is actually not bad. It tows up to 3,600 pounds. It doesn't matter what trim you get, 3,600 pounds. That's a pretty darn good amount for this minivan. But saying that it's front wheel drive, you could probably do some sick ass burnouts with this thing. Chrysler is really getting onto the innovations here. They've never failed. They've never failed to have very good innovations with their vehicles. The Pacifica is the first ever minivan that is available as a plug-in hybrid. There's no other hybrid options. There's no electric, nothing. But the Pacifica is a pretty wealthy car to drive. I think went of that and it kind of sounds like crap so unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to drive the Pacifica on the road but at least I do have the chance to drive around the building and such so I can get a main scope of how this thing feels but I'm also I've also got some experience behind the Pacifica with a very very short drive from where I worked at the time which was around five minutes to my aunt's but we're gonna go and kind of explore the Pacifica here and see um, how awesome this thing actually drives. When I first set off in this thing, it is a little bit touchy on the throttle, but so far one thing I'm noticing as I'm about to go over this pothole, the Pacifica soaks it up really nice. Coming over through here. We're gonna test the stop start system. I'm gonna to come to a complete stop. The car just completely shut off. As soon as I let my foot off the brake, turns right back on again. So once you get going, it's pretty good. One thing I do wanna test out, here we go. thing does get up and go. This is fast. This is a very fast van. Let's try that again. This time we're going to brake torque it a little bit. As 
So surprisingly, it does not spin the wheels. That's one thing that I kind of wish that it did, but then again, I turned traction control off. So maybe we should try turning it back, or maybe we should uh, turn it back on. Uh, trying, or I'm gonna try to turn it back on for you guys. And see how that does. This thing turns tight. There's a little bit of wheel spin. This thing does really get up and go. And surprisingly, it doesn't spin the wheels with traction control off, but it, tur it spins it around, or it spins a little bit um, with traction on. But just driving around leisurely, this thing's pretty quiet. The nine speed though is kind of a little bit more geared towards economy because I noticed that it's just kind of lurching around now in I'm not sure what gear because this thing does not have paddle shifters but this thing is pretty quick enough to um, downshift because if you're traveling let's say 10 floor it it takes a little bit for it to actually downshift but it does pretty well haul ass it's definitely more than enough power from all any van, let's just say. And I'm gonna avoid these big ass potholes over here. And we're going in behind Kia. But I mean, just driving the Pacifica here, it turns very sharp, its steering is very direct, but there is a little, there's a tiny, tiny, there's a good enough amount of play. You shouldn't expect to have this thing be the most sportiest handler, but it is what it is. Let's try, let's run around this parking lot here again. And I'm just gonna floor it. But it'll spin the tires when you don't, which is kind of strange, but then again, this is a minivan. It's not meant to go drag racing, but it's got so much power, it literally spins the wheels. It doesn't feel like it's a, uh, it, does, it, it probably handles pretty nicely. It, does, it can whip around corners pretty quick. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to really test that, but based on my first little kind of impressions of driving, just driving around normally at 10 or so miles an hour, it's pretty good. The suspension's very well dampened. It does kind of shift the body around when it's slow, but then again, that's any car. Hitting a pothole at about 10, that was really nothing. It, did shake the body a little bit but it didn't or it, it flexed the body just a tiny tiny bit but it's still good the pacifica is a very great value um personally i'd recommend going with this trim because it is the perfect blend of style um technology and such you get the the uh the power doors you get the remote start you get the push button start you get um a pretty decent seven inch touch screen you get the digital driver's display in here. You get a very sporty kind of minivan that has plenty of power, but also is very quiet and comfortable. Um, a lot of safety features and such. And the stow and go seats, which are absolutely my favorite feature. And pretty much the cargo practicality of a full-size van. Yes, full-size vans do double the space, but 140 cubic foot of storage for a minivan is nuts. And that's why I would pretty much just go ahead and buy this thing. So, again, thanks to Chad for allowing me to review this. I will drop his contact information below. And again, I can't stress this enough. Thank you so much, TriStar, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You guys have been nothing but awesome to me, especially with the Dodge Ram review. And also, I'd give a shout out to TriStar Kia over here because they have helped me out with the Kia Stinger review. Even though I didn't get to drive it, it was still pretty good. But at least I got to ride in the Stinger, and that was on my main channel. So, yeah. So, guys, I'll see you later.